Hello to everyone watching this footage. It's Leviathan here again, and to start things off, I'm going to introduce myself to newcomers. I'm born high-functioning and autistic. I'm obsessed with fiction, and I'm planning to make my own creative universe like the late Stanley did. For this video, I'm going to introduce four different characters, and I hope you guys could bear with me while I introduce each of the four to you guys. Just please. I'm just trying to make this work on your behalf so it wouldn't be a waste of your guys' time, you know? Please. Here's the first one. Fang. Real name? None. Height? 150 feet. Weight? 93 tons. Status? Villain in Intergalactic Abomination. Base? The Lone Moon Mobile. Intelligence? Two brains. Behavior? Destructive, vicious, and bloodthirsty. She'll do anything to cure her insatiable hunger, though for a short time. Lethality, as above, she's highly, highly unpredictable. Weaknesses, broken nails, explosives, electricity, and has a short temper. Powers, she has great size and strength, acute senses, a strong healing factor, can consume all matter, and wields a large set of vampire-like teeth. She later gained the ability to travel across alternate realities. Eyes, deep red. Hair, brownish black, in a short form. Origin. One time, Cosmic was examining the lifestyle of the traveling Captain Wagers and decided to put her in a horrible trap. She used her powers to create an abandoned moon circling around a dwarf star, which, unbeknownst to Captain Wagers, was the home of a massive and bloodthirsty creature known as Fang. After a long commotion, Cosmic eventually transported Fang to the default Earth, where she rampaged across Washington, D.C., until getting into an intense fight against the heroic Star Spangler. When Fang lost the fight, Cosmic gave Fang the ability to travel across realities, and she was since exploring the multiverse and spreading destruction wherever she goes. Costume? She wears a white one-piece toga made of cloth. Team Solitary, or with other villains. Original inspiration? Nancy Fowler Archer. The next character that I'm going to introduce is one native to the futuristic dimension, which is basically the native heroes and villains of the futuristic dimension are the descendants of the default dimensions, modern day heroes and villains and such. And I apologize for the unintended pause. I was just trying to think, make things work, you know? Here it is. Gamer Girl. Real name, Viola Netherman II. Height, 6 feet 5 inches. Weight, 213 pounds. Status, hero, and descendant of Video Girl. Base, futuristic dimension, mobile. Intelligence, 3.5 brains. Behavior, loving, protective, and intellectual. She's obsessed with video games. Lethality, only when threatened or during a fight. Weaknesses, no healing factor. She's also a horrible fighter. Powers. She possesses the same powers as Video Girl. Eyes, greenish blue, hair strong blue, strawberry blonde, and braid. Origin. In the futuristic dimension, the native Video Girl is a young woman named Viola Netherman II, who barely graduated from high school. After learning that she is the descendant of Video Girl, Viola immediately got her own mobile and console systems like her ancestor gaining full control of the video fighters. Which, just so you know, are video game characters native to the Leviathan universe. Eventually, the murderous Liza came by and attempted to kill Viola, but was finally defeated when she was projected into the video world and defeated by Beauty Killer, a native to the game. Just so you know, Liza is, as far as I know, either a mercenary or a bounty hunter, but is still very feral, very devastating. Earning the name Gamer Girl, Viola would do anything to help those in need, including her ancestor. Costume. 
She simply wears nothing official, nothing in particular, just whatever she feels like wearing. Games, Solitary with Video Girl and Other Heroes. Original inspiration, video games. The next one is a very unique type of individual. And I hope you guys are bearing with me, and I hope you guys are enjoying the video so far. You know, satisfaction is uh, a necessity for this stuff. Here it is. Tara Hippus. Real name, none. Height, 100 feet. Weight, 77.5 tons. Status, hero, and Hoof Heroes member. Base, Chironius Mobile. Intelligence, three and a half brains. Behavior, flirtatious, cheerful, and somewhat warlike. She'll do anything to avenge the death of her greatest lover. Lethality, highly dangerous. She has really big hooves. Weaknesses, she suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder. Bounds, she has great size and strength, great speed, sharp hooves, and wields a variety of weapons that fit her size. She also has uncanny reasoning skills, along with uncanny seduction skills. Eyes, greenish-blue, hair, bright hazel, and flowing. Origin. The Chironians were once a happy species who had no war or hatred on their planet. But one day, a time-traveling Arachna killed a few Chironians, and when they learned of this, the Chironians decided to protect themselves from anarchy, which led to many Chironians becoming deadly warriors. Terra Hippus was a new member of the Chironian armies, who also had a strong love for a male Chironian named Max. However, at a week before their supposed wedding, there was a severe battle against Arachna that led to Max dying in the arms of his fiancée. Since then, Terra will do anything to avenge him, and at one point, a spiritual hologram of Max came to her and gave her permission to be with others in romance. Recently, Terra was hired by Centaura into becoming a member of the Hoof Heroes. Just so you know, the Chironians are basically 100-foot-tall centaur people, basically. Costume. She either wears a leathery top or a suit of Chironian armor. Teams. Solitary, with the Hoof Heroes and other heroes. Original inspiration. Centaurs of Greek mythology. Here's the last character I'm going to introduce, which is... Which is uh, basically something that once I describe it to you would make sense. Hera Tippus. Real name, none. Height, 100 feet. Weight, 73 tons. Status, anti-hero and rival of Terra Hippus. Base, the quirky dimension, mobile. Intelligence, two brains. Behavior, loopy yet protective. She never worries about anything. Lethality. Only during a fight. Weaknesses. Low IQ and being rivaled. Powers. She possesses similar powers as Terra Hippus, along with wielding an arsenal of non-lethal ancient weapons. Eyes. Light blue. Hair. Light hazel and scruffy. Origin. In the quirky dimension, the native Terra Hippus is rather an imperfect duplicate of her known only as Hera Tippus. One day, Terra Hippus traveled to the quirky dimension to ask Hera to help ward off a swarm of ravenous Ultradons, which were currently attacking the island of Mythos. Just so you know, Ultradons are kaiju-sized sharks of different variations. After a time of dealing with the Horde, Hera and Terra finally finished them off, leaving the rest of them retreating into the ocean. Since then, Hera would do all she can to be a trustworthy ally for both Terra and for all innocents. Costume. She wears a similar outfit as Terra Hippus. Team solitary with Terra Hippus or with others. Order inspiration, Centaurs and DC's Bizarro. Well, those are the four characters, and uh, I hope you guys could bear with me and such. And um, hope you guys are had a fine February, and hope you're going to have a fine March and such. And if you guys want, you could like, subscribe, and comment down below. It's your choice, you know. So until next time, I hope you guys enjoy your time and such, and...
just recently, like last time I visited my family, I got um, introduced by one of my brothers to a VR system. And I decided that some way, somehow, VR will be my next medium for my Leviathan universe. It might it might take a bit, but from what I've seen, I think I would make it work some way, somehow. Because I need my creations to last forever more. I just hope this is the right reality, and I just hope there's some satisfaction for everyone involved, you know? So I hope you guys could spread the word and introduce my creations to other people and such. And help me get a fine boost in popularity and such. If that if that's okay with you guys. It's your choice. So I hope you guys have a fine march and such. A fine rest of the day and hope you guys like do whatever you want and such. Until next time, in transmission.